Good morning. We're talking this morning about uh, how redemption ties in with the rapture or the rapture actually completes our redemption. And we're reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 1. I left off in our past session in verse 7 where Paul says, In whom, talking about in whom, in whom, this is making reference to the Messiah, in whom we have redemption. Through his blood, again, the Messiah is mentioned here, is it, through his blood, eat of the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his favor. And again, I mentioned in our last session that uh, redemption is much more than just forgiveness of sins. Uh, we, if you were just a forgiven sinner, you know, if you were just forgiven and allowed into heaven, did you know you'd have to be forgiven up there also? Because there would be, if there had been no change in your nature, if you had not, uh, you know, uh, been born again of the ruach, that's why it's important that a person has to be born again of the spirit, is because if you were just forgiven and allowed to come into heaven, you would still be sinning in heaven. And of course, there's, we know it from the book of Revelation, chapter 20, uh, verse chapter 20, uh, 20 or 21, talks about the new Jerusalem uh, that only those that are names are written in the Lamb's book of life will be allowed to enter therein and there will be nothing that defiles that will be allowed to enter that city. So redemption is much more than just being forgiven and I want to you know emphasize that to you to realize that uh, redemption has already begun for those that have put their faith and trust in the Messiah. Uh, We've been given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts, as we've already discussed. That is the down payment guaranteeing you the redemption of your body. Because redemption will not be complete until our bodies are, are, are redeemed. And that, of course, happens at the rapture. That's, that's a, the purpose of the rapture. For people who, <laughs> people who want to say there is no rapture and so forth, then they're denying the very resurrection because that's what it is. For, the, for those in Messiah, those that have died in Messiah will be raptured or resurrected before the tribulation or the seven year time frame uh, referred to as Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. There's also a, a, uh, re, uh, a resurrection for the Old Testament saints that's mentioned in the book of Daniel that will take place at the end of the tribulation. And uh, the reason that they're, they're a separate group of people, just like I've shared with you before, people make the mistake of lumping everyone together. And Yahuwah himself, our creator, has, uh, has chosen uh, particular groups of, of set-apart ones, which one being the church, and those, those that are involved in the church, or i.e. those that are born again, Jew and Gentile believers, that are part of the bride of the Messiah, who will be married to him, in Revelation chapter one, uh, chapter 19, uh, if you'll read the first few verses down through uh, chapter 19, you'll see where, when the wedding takes place. It takes place before he comes back to the earth at the end of the tribulation. So we have to be there to be there for part of the wedding. <laughs> That's why the rapture of the bride of the Messiah has to take place. I mean, that, that's why the rapture has to take place before the tribulation, simply because we, uh, it's, it's for the purpose, one of the purposes is to, uh, for, the, for the marriage of the Lamb to take place. And then we will come back with him at the time that he co comes to destroy the enemies of Yasharel or Israel. And also to remove the sinners off the planet. Uh, those that are still alive who have endured through the tribulation, whether they be saved or unsaved. The unsaved will be removed off the earth as it explained about the, um, the sheep and goat judgments. Uh, the goats will be removed off the earth. It's also the same parable of that's illustrated in, about the uh, the wheat and the tares. The tares, being the unbelievers, will be cast into the fire. The um, and, and those that are that are alive on the earth, which will be natural people, these will not they will not experience a resurrected body at that time, because they're going to repopulate the earth, because over over a half a billion, I mean over a half. Uh, the population, which would be approximately over, say, 4 billion people, around 4 billion people, will perish during the seven-year tribulation period. So they will help repopulate the earth, um, and they will be the ones that were allowed to enter into the natural uh, 
millennial reign of the Messiah here on the earth. But the, the home of the church is the New Jerusalem. This is where we will be living. And, uh, boy, that's going to be a great place to live. <laughs> I, can tell you, I can guarantee you that. Um, I want to continue reading now. It says in verse 9, uh, well, actually verse 10, I'll read, that in the dis dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are in on earth even in him now this right here is a, another reference right here to the rapture simply because if you read it and understand what's being said here that Paul makes mention that in the dis dispensation of the fullness of times in other words Yahuwah has a specific time for the rapture to take place and the reason for it is stated right here that he might gather together in one all things in Messiah which are in heaven and this word of course all things doesn't mean things it's actually making reference to the fact is that um, that it's talking about people being reconciled all people in Messiah both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him that he might gather us all together in fact that supports the scriptures what Paul wrote about in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 talking about the rapture that and also in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18 Talking about the fact is that those that have died before us would be raised, raised up first, and then we which are alive and remain on the earth shall be called up together with them. This gathering together is a reference right here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, to the rapture of the church. At the fullness of the dispensation, of the fullness of time, Yahuwah might gather us together, but all things in Messiah. That's why this resurrection is only for those that have died in Messiah. This has nothing to do with the Old Testament saints. They will be resurrected at the end of the tribulation. But the church will be, be resurrected before Daniel's 70th week takes place. We'll pick this up on our next session, part number three. So until then, shalom.